Well, thanks everyone for joining us today on the first ever business investment forum for Tanglewood and the 419 Town Center. We have an impressive participation in today's meeting. We actually had over 80 registered participants. Um, and I'm confident that you're gonna learn a great deal from the presenters today. Um, this panel has a lot of exciting information to share with you about investment opportunities and current and planned growth in the uh, commercial corridor of Roanoke County. And today's agenda includes an overview of the 419 market and business opportunities the state of Tanglewood Mall, details about Carillion Children's expansion, and then a brief overview about how the Small Business Development Center can assist you with your business startup and growth needs. I would ask that you please add your questions to the chat feature during the meeting so that we can coordinate your input, feedback, and questions when our speak with our speakers. Um, in the interest of everyone's time, we're going to be moving quickly through the presentation as, as quickly as possible because we need to allow as much time as possible for questions at the end. Uh, so go ahead and start adding your questions along the way and we'll get started. So as you're probably aware, the county launched a significant planning effort in 2016 to reimagine the future of Roanoke County's busiest commercial corridor, and it's our most vibrant business destination. Our goal with the reimagined effort was to transform Roanoke County's key commercial corridors into town centers with a greater density of commercial and residential offerings and to attract new professionals and businesses to the Tanglewood 419 Town Center. And we are developing a roadmap for future capital projects and a regulatory framework that supports the plan vision as well as focusing on leveraging state and federal resources to fund infrastructure improvements in this corridor. The Board of Supervisors adopted the 419 plan in July of 2019 and you will hear today about how much of that work is underway and is already generating results. The 419 corridor is the heart of commerce for Roanoke County and a key economic driver for the community. It has long served as a premier shopping and business destination for a diverse mix of retail, commercial and residential opportunities desired by citizens and businesses. With over 42,000 vehicle trips per day and the highest traffic count in Roanoke County, there are over 260 commercial and residential properties located in the study area. This is the county's most dynamic commercial destination and our planning efforts are an investment in Roanoke County's economic future with a market-based multifaceted approach in realizing our vision. There are many, many elements to our vision for the 419 corridor with the initial focus being three catalyst sites that were identified during the creation of the plan. Additionally, there is a significant emphasis on infrastructure improvements along the 419 corridor for multimodal use, transportation access and safety. The three catalyst sites shown on the map include the Tanglewood Mall property, the Ridges property on the hill across the street from the mall owned by Old Heritage Corporation, and the Madison Square property. Each of these target areas are uniquely positioned for development or redevelopment opportunities and are generating interest from a variety of users. This is an aerial view of how the corridor looks today. and our vision of the density that we would like to create over the next 15 to 20 years, it would look something like this. So how do we get there? How do we implement the plan? Area plans drive infrastructure investments, which drive economic development. Government's role is to facilitate economic development primarily through a favorable regulatory environment and targeted infrastructure improvements. We are making strategic investments now for the growth and success that will come over the next several years. In fact, most of our work takes three to five years before you actually begin to see results. We're working to address zoning regulations and design guidelines to encourage appropriate development that's consistent with the plan goals. Things like allowable density of site development, building design, architecture, sidewalk and streetscape elements, open space requirements and parking regulations are all gonna be evaluated. 
But none of this happens without the private sector investment in this corridor. Many are in this meeting today. Thank you for your investment. So our initial focus on the 419 plan implementation is on the catalyst sites, particularly the area referred to as Tanglewood Mall and the ridges. At the ridges, I'm getting feedback here, hang on. At the Ridges, we have been working with developers and property owners for more than seven years to facilitate infrastructure improvements, in particular, opening up access to the property behind Chuck E. Cheese, referred to as Fallow Water Extension. The goal is now to open up new property for development and create connections to 419 that will begin the town center development. And we are making significant infrastructure improvements along the frontage of Tanglewood Mall with the widening of 419 and future interchange reconstruction. This is uh, what it looks like in a snapshot. Uh, this is a breakdown of the infrastructure investments fund and funded and planned over the next five years. To date, nearly $50 million in state and federal funding has been secured for transportation and streetscape improvements in this corridor, specifically the widening of Route 419, the new construction of the Fallow Water Access Road, and the interchange reconstruction, all supporting interconnectivity and access management. Our transportation team has done a great job of securing these resources for Route 419 at Tanglewood. This is what it looks like. You will note in the yellow, this is the widening of 419 that's under construction currently. Uh, the purple is a new phase, we're calling it phase two from um, Ogden to Starkey. And the blue is the interchange reconstruction. And the green area, that's the fallow water lane extension. I'll go a little bit more into that with you. This is the streetscape of, for 419, the widening that's underway, constructing a third lane to Route 220 South Ramp, adding sidewalks, bicycle lane, pedestrian signals, bus shelters. Uh, the construction is underway and will be going on probably till fall of 22. This was a six and a half million dollar project. No county funds were involved in making this project happen. This is what it's looking like. You've probably all seen it up to this point. Uh, hopefully it'll be as painless as possible as we get to making these improvements a reality. And this is the phase two from Starkey to Ogden. Um, again, road widening, bicycle lane, sidewalks. This is gonna really add to the transportation access in this corridor. And the big one is the diverging diamond interchange, 17 half million in reconstruction activity that will be underway uh, starting in 2023 and construction in 2024. A big project, but I think it's important both to the county and the city as we connect to Franklin Road uh, in future years. And lastly, this is the Fallow Water Lane Extension. We've secured nearly four and a half million in funding for this project to open up access to a catalyst site across from Tanglewood Mall. Ultimately, the goal is to connect this road through the intersection at McAdoo's at Grand Pavilion and someday across Route 419 to Fallow Water. All of these projects were identified in our 419 effort and discussions with developers and investors is currently underway. So we did an extensive analysis. We did a residential study that has shown that the market can absorb up to 1,000 new residential units per year for the next five years in this corridor. And the town center plan opens up residential development opportunities, which in turn increase the demand and opportunities for new business development. The town center vision also unlocks new retail opportunities as well as other business opportunities. Our study revealed that this area has higher than the U.S. median and average income levels, a large and affluent population base with educational attainment levels that are in excess of um, many areas in the in the region. And the area offers 69 percent white collar employment within a 10 mile drive 
and a 42% of a population with a bachelor's degree or higher. So the market analysis concluded that the market is sufficiently strong to accommodate community, retail, restaurants, and the 419 study area is well positioned within Southwest Roanoke Market as a strong community retail location. And we're seeing some of that activity with redevelopment that's been occurring. I wanted to create a snapshot here to show you uh, what our focus and target has been. The ridges area, as I mentioned, uh, we are working with developers and are trying to time, excuse me one second, time that with the new road construction. Um, in the past several years, I think we forget about some of the activity that's occurred in this corridor. Um, but if you look at some of the redevelopment projects with VFP corporate headquarters uh, relocating to the corridor, buying the former Cox Communications building, uh, the Lewis Gale ER building that was under construction and redeveloped in the last several years, American National Bank repurposed the Petroleum Marketers building here in the county. And um, also, if you look at even Waffle House has redeveloped um, a site here. So there's a lot of activity in redevelopment projects. They're backfilling vac vacant space. They're picking up uh, real estate transactions very quickly. Turnover is occurring much more frequently and rapidly than in the past. So it's great to see numerous buildings getting repurposed in the corridor with new tenants and owners. And of course, Tanglewood Mall, a lot of their vacant space is getting retenanted. They've installed new signs and they're gearing up now for new out parcel development and new businesses coming. And this is a new redevelopment project by Alexander Boone that will be underway this year. Fallow Water Square will reposition residential opportunities near residential properties, excuse me, near First Citizens Bank for a two-story office building that will become the future home of Long and Foster, as well as Boone Homes. And they are currently seeking additional tenants to fill six to 8,000 square feet of available space. This is a great example of enhancing the economic base of the county, consistent with our 419 plan and the town center creation. We very much appreciate the private sector investments being made by Alexander Boone to advance the county's goal of realizing this vision. And transformation is underway at Tanglewood Mall. This is a snapshot of some of the activity that's currently going on with the uh, Kroger Fuel Island now open. Michael's is now open. They filled the former AC Moore space. Carillion renovations to be complete in October. The newly branded entrance signs. A lot of exciting activity in the works here. And the market is responding. This is showing the location of the two out parcel buildings along the front of uh, 419 with five new businesses. You've heard about them probably with Chipotle, Aspen, Dental Blaze Pizza, Jersey Mike's uh, and Chicken Salad Chick. All very exciting new, some of these new to market uh, commercial enterprises that are coming. And construction begins on the out parcel buildings this year. They will open in early 2022. The, the picture to the right is uh, another new tenant, BKT uh, Uniforms. They opened in 8,000 square feet. So uh, they're backfilling vacant space inside the mall as well as outside of the mall. So picture your business here in Roanoke County's growing and dynamic commercial corridor. The investments being made to modernize, to improve the corridor and the 419 Town Center, as well as the private sector investments being made are all a demonstration of the market viability of this area. Businesses are realizing that they can achieve success with the energy that is underway and the demographics that exist in this area. Consider today's forum as your invitation to grow your business in Roanoke County. I will now turn the presentation over and welcome John Abernathy with Blackwater Resources who will speak with us about Tanglewood Mall. Thank you, Jill. Um, I will try to keep this brief and I'll look forward to the questions that anybody has and 
This will certainly be less polished than you, Jill. That was great. And you touched on a lot of things going on at Tanglewood. So uh, what I would like to do is just tell you a little bit about our company quickly and then just maybe tell you some things you don't see in the, in the news. Um, so Blackwater is based in Birmingham, Alabama. We are a development company at heart. So we bought Tanglewood not to keep the status quo, but to figure out how to redevelop the property. And that includes some of the things you've seen now and hopefully some other ideas that we have that will come in the future. So uh, as we looked at Tanglewood, we purchased it in late 2016. We saw a lot of opportunity, some that's still, still available to us, some that we've been able to uh, get going and some that maybe is not an opportunity anymore with COVID and some other shifts in the, in the economy are not available to us. And that, that is the world we live in and redeveloping. Uh, it's sometimes the timing, uh, but we knew that more development needed to be there, more restaurants needed to be there. And certainly we had a mall that was uh, dying, um, just like most malls and secondary markets. They just were getting less and less tenants as uh, less and less tenants went to malls, uh, but went more on standalone outside pieces, did a lot more online, uh, sales. That's just what's going on in our world right now. So Blackwater is a, a company uh, that searches around the Southeast to redevelop properties and also to uh, build new ground up properties. We do a lot of public anchored grocery centers uh, and, and various things such as that um, these days. So that that's a little bit about us. And if you don't mind going to the next one, so again, Tanglewood Mall, we looked at it originally uh, with its strong points that Jill highlighted. Great, great access, great visibility. Uh, and you had two great mall entries with a lot of great structure of buildings that have been taken care of very well. And we needed to figure out how to unlock some of the potential. We wish we could have torn down some pieces and opened aired some pieces, but it doesn't look like that's gonna uh, be the best for this property. Um, we have another mall in Tallahassee, Florida that we actually did. We gutted the entire mall and put 400,000 square feet of state of Florida office leases in them. We ended up tearing down a portion. We built an arena and a food hall, all of which are shuttered now with COVID because they're not allowed to operate as they were originally envisioned. So uh, the world sort of shifts and changes and you have to go with them. So in, in this instance, we have two great mall entries and great structure and, and that's our challenge to unlock that. You can go to the next one. And so uh, part, of, part of that, again, this is the site plan, as you saw that Jill said, the white and behind Belk is, is the uh, part that we're really trying to figure out. Um, you know, we faced a lot of headwinds trying to get to a point where we even are today. Again, it's been since 2016. We're basically fighting the old traditional retail model of large tenants. Uh, retail tenants that want large parking lots and lots of visibility in a world where we're all shopping online and we want convenience, we want quick in and out. When we do go, uh, there's some tenants like TJ Maxx do a great job of getting us, you know, into an adventure mode where you don't know what's going to be there. So you still love to go in person, but you also want to be able to order from Staples, pick it up quick. You, don't, you know, you don't need the size parking lots that are there anymore. So uh, we had to sort of go against the, the, the status quo and get a lot of these tenants to let us dense this project up and, and put uses out on the road, get a lot more restaurant. They typically like to keep restaurants and entertainment and things away from them that take their parking. So we had to, you know, again, go through the process of, of working with them. And so that's that was the first step is getting their approval to do a lot of the things that we wanted to do. And then secondly, we needed to uh, figure out what opportunities were available that were not retail because this is a large property, 800,000 square feet. And again, in today's market, they're very successful retailers like the ones here uh, that we have, but they're also a lot less of them than there were five years ago. And so our challenge was figuring out how to change it to a mixed use property. It doesn't set well for residential, but that certainly is a great piece that many are able to put into their properties, but it did sit well for office or medical and, uh, we, we were very fortunate to find a partner in Cree and Clinic that was willing to come and invest in Tanglewood in the county. And that really kicked off, you know, what do we do with uh, this end of the property and how do we start adding uh, daily traffic? And then how do we give that daily traffic and, and Carillion, you know, things that they need, which is 
good access, restaurants, convenience, a lot of things that make it a, an overall successful center. You can go to the next. And so there, that, that's where we are today. And Jill introduced, so I won't repeat, but I, did, I will call out that we, we have a couple of more uh, uses on the left side in front of TJ Maxx and, and Staples that we're gonna have some additional restaurants that'll be announced in the near future that would come there and start construction later this year and early next year. So again, I think we're going to uh, get to a point where we're going to start seeing um, a place where you can go and get, you know, a lot of different things done at once and, and not be so spread out and just come for one thing and go elsewhere. You'll be able to park and maybe eat, you know, people that don't have medical appointments can do that. They can shop in between. It's becoming something that uh, more of what I think the county would envision. And if we can get the inside of the mall unlocked a little bit too, I think that would even help more. Uh, okay. So this is the interior of the mall. Um, and so where, where we're really, I, I'll end here and just let questions and, and there are other speakers is there's a lot of opportunity in the mall. What you see highlighted in, in that color is, is lease spaces. Some of them are, are more licensed shorter term and some are, are longer term commitments, but you see uh, there is white space available and there's upstairs and downstairs space available and we're continuing to transition and Carillion's continuing to lease space and 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 come up with ideas for doing things as well which we're really excited about and thankful for them doing that and we continue to look for opportunity um, as well so this is the upper level you see the kids market that comes sometimes in that large white area they're they're seasonal um, and on the right, where you see it shaded, Carillion has leased all of that space. And so they have been building out in there and doing different uses there where the old Millermont College is. And then we have a significant amount of uses there that are available for ideas. Some people need to be on the first floor for traffic and some people are more destination and they can go on second floor to open up different office or, or other destination type uses. And then on the first floor, we have a lot of things in motion that aren't always public related to negotiations and national tenants that are looking here. For instance, next to Staples, I have an agreement with, with someone to go there if we can finish up our lease to take the old Steinmore space. So as things transition out, Steinmore, they see more tenants that maybe aren't as strong. We're getting stronger tenants like Michaels and others that are coming back and backfilling. So, um, Every space is different. Every finish of the current situation of that space is different. Um, and so I can't just say this is how much it is to come to Tanglewood and lease space. It's really about your vision, your business, um, what you're looking for, your square footage, where you like to be, what the space looks like. Um, and then we can really talk through what does that mean? Where's the best place for you? And, and uh, then we can kind of line out what what it is. And we, you know, we take chances with people very much. So if they have a, if they're energetic and passionate and have a good business, we take chances with them to try to work a structure that is very flexible for them term and rent. And uh, so I would just say, reach out to us if, if you have, have some thoughts or interest in Tanglewood. Thanks, Jill. So John, I've got a few questions in the chat feature here that I'm going to just, uh, sure. Go ahead and ask you while we have you, because I know you're tight on time today. Yeah, sure, go. Um, I'm interested in seeing Tanglewood Mall serving partially as a music venue. This could also include a community room where local music groups can meet. Local music clubs such as Irish, Old Time Fiddlers, Star City Ukuleles, and more cannot meet at restaurants due to expensive uh, license required for live music. What are your thoughts on that? Yeah, I, I think we're right now we're open to anything. I think the challenge and what everybody has to understand is to, to, to open the doors and turn on the lights every day in Tanglewood Mall is an expensive venture, not only from utilities and, and air conditioning, but also staff that make sure it's clean and picked up and safe with security and and you know all those things so we so we're willing to look at it but we're not necessarily a free community um, location either so it takes someone and what you're specifically asking will probably take someone initiating coming to us and saying i want to do this type of venue i'm willing to be the person responsible i will coordinate 
and schedule, you know, the things. But as far as we'd like to come in the mall and set up and play music, it, you know, again, there's some things that go in motion when you do those type of things related to security and just all manner of things that are can can also cost money. So it would take someone coming up with an idea and coming to us and saying, we love this space, we want to do this, and I will be the one responsible. And then we okay. can, yeah. Thank you. I have another, um, Muhammad is interested in opening a boutique fitness studio in Roanoke. He's looking at 2,800 to 4,000 square yeah. feet. Uh, he's hoping to start a site search soon with like uh, construction build out complete by the end of the year. Okay. Would that be something of interest? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. We have, we have constraints that I can offline, I can talk with him about related to where he can go, where he can't go related to other users. And we also have to find the right spot and size for him, but we have definitely have spots available. There's a Taekwondo use in there, for instance, that's similar to fitness that's able to utilize that. And you, you know, there's some advantages there. If you go out on 419, it's expensive, you know, it's just new construction costs. And we've all seen what's happened to the housing market and construction costs. Uh, related to materials. So it is a lot more expensive than if you go, for instance, chicken salad chick went in the old Applebee's and they're going to be building out soon. And then as you go interior, there's different opportunities there that are less expensive. So we just need to talk, reach out to us. We'll do it. So, so I, I had one other question to kind of follow up on it. Now with these plans in motion, right? Um, if someone say they want, they found a, a slot, let's just say in this image, uh, M6, whatever, um, and they said, hey, they wanted, I wanted to do my own build out. By the way, this is Mohammed. If I wanted to do my own build, I had my own construction team, had my own plans and everything. Um, would, would that be more feasible versus going, going directly to you guys for the entire project management aspect of the full build out and the construction? Correct. So just, just real quickly for everybody. Any, almost any scenario is, is an option here. So you can come to your own build out and, um, and take, it, take control of space and finish it and do it. Then you'll have cheaper rent. Or you can come to us and talk to us about doing some work. And, you know, we factor that into the rent that we charge you. So, yes, absolutely. And there's so much in motion, you just need to reach out offline and talk to us. Because even where you see white spaces, we're constantly negotiating with people. We have offers that come in and we're negotiating. We're trying to figure out um, you just see the announcements at the end but those things have been going for um, sorry those things have been going for you know as much as six months so there's a lot that goes on behind the scenes so you just need to reach out all, offline and we'll be glad to talk to you about it. thanks john i have another one um first of all congratulations on this plan my partner and i chose to move to roanoke in part because of it we very much want to live in a community that values smart growth and mixed use development. Second, is Blackwater and or other developers committed to constructing multi-story to the curb structures at Tanglewood? The structures you describe are gas pumps in what appear to be single story, typical suburban sprawl buildings. So what is your thought on that? Yeah, we're not we're not allowed to do multi-story. So again, if you're in the business, you understand there's a lot of legacy leases here. We have leases from the 70s uh, that exist here and, and including some in the 2000s, but extremely restrictive what we can do. And again, if you're in our business, you'd understand they talk about where you can put a building, how big it can be, how high it can be, how many spaces can be around it. So we're we have our, our, our hands locked pretty good about what we can do. So we would not be able to do any multi-story buildings out front from a visibility standpoint. There's a lot of places I just really can't even do buildings. Um, so we have to work within the, I guess, the parameters we're allowed to do with leases that are in place at that shop. So. Right. And so everyone on, on this uh, Zoom meeting understands the vision is long term. It's a 20 year plus plan. This is not going to happen overnight. Uh, we do want to create more density, but there's a lot of work to be done to get there. And it's just, it's going to take a lot of involvement of the community of investors of property owners and partners to make that work. So um, yeah, and I'll say sometimes you see things go dark, like JCPenney, and you think, oh, that's terrible. It might not always be terrible. In that case, it wasn't, wasn't that a great thing? 
Um, you know, they had a use already in Roanoke and that allowed a spot for Carillion and now we're able to do some really exciting things. So just because someone decides not to be there anymore uh, doesn't necessarily mean it's a bad thing. It could free up a lot of restrictions, allow us to do a lot of new things. Right. Phil, do you mind if I ask a follow-up to that? Sure. Marshall, thank you for explaining that, that there are still restrictions in place that limit um, height. I'm surprised by that since this plan has been in place since 2019. Jill, what are the holdups? Well, it's not easy to change zoning ordinances and regulations and do the infrastructure improvements all at once. It, there's a lot of moving parts here and it, it takes a lot of um, sweat equity, so to speak, for staff, for uh, elected officials and others to manage. So it, we're doing it incrementally over time. It's just and all the restrictions are not countywide. Some of them are lease, you know, right. lease wide right. Tanglewood. Right. Right. Leases have been in place for, uh, in some instances, 50 years. And so uh, if, a, if a person holding a lease doesn't want to change a term, they don't have to change it. So it's a challenge. It's, uh, we've been working through it. Two years ago, we couldn't have done what you're seeing being done now, but we've been able to get some, some flexibility. Is there anything citizens can do to help that along? Though I live in Roanoke City, I should know that. Yeah. I'm actually not a county resident. Um, no, I, I don't think so. I would like to say you could, you know, reach out like you can to your local representative and <laughs> reach out to these companies, but um, it's not. It, it's, yeah. it's not. It's it's really, and Jill knows, we, we've, we've made some of these efforts since 2016 and still are just achieving some of them now. So it's a, it's a, it's just an effort on our part, typically. Great. Thank you for your time. Know that you have cheerleaders pushing for that. Thank you. All right. I'm not seeing any other questions for you, John, at the moment, but I hope you'll stay with us. Yeah, I'll be here. So if you got more, go ahead. All right. So now I'm going to turn it over to Elizabeth Betsy Parkins with Carillion Children's at Tanglewood so that she can give us an update as to their new operation. So Betsy. Great, thank you all very much. Um, this is Betsy Parkins. Uh, as Jill mentioned, I am actually senior marketing consultant for Carillion Children's. I've been working with them uh, since before they were Carillion Children's. Uh, and I manage uh, marketing for all of the pediatric services for the health system. And uh, Jill, if you wanna go ahead and uh, push through to the next one. I, I wanted to start uh, sh by showing you a rendering from uh, the inside, the main lobby of, of the building, uh, actually was on a hard hat tour two days ago, and uh, this is exactly what it's going to look like. Uh, very spacious. Uh, we have, um, you know, we're, we're looking at uh, new technology coming into the building, uh, helping our patients uh, check in and check out and make that uh, transition pretty smoothly. But we're really excited about the design of the building. Uh, and if you go to the next slide, I can tell you a little bit about what our space is looking like. So uh, we, we actually have the entire former JCP space. And of that 77,000 square feet on two floors will be dedicated to pediatric services. Uh, we also uh, share space upstairs uh, with our pediatric uh, and adult dentistry practices. Uh, so they'll take up some space on the second floor. But located in, in the JCP space, we have 14 pediatric subspecialties and a general pediatric medicine practice. We will also be offering imaging and lab services for our patients. And what's important about that is uh, because it's pediatric, we're trying to transition a lot of these uh, services from our RMH, the hospital location. So the volume for these imaging and lab services will increase since we are, we are concentrating folks to come into the Tanglewood Mall space. Um, it's also important to know, though, that uh, Croyan also has additional space at the mall. Right now, we, are, we have an existing human resources training center. It's up on the second floor. It's been there now for about a year, I guess. I guess it opened just before COVID. Um, and we run all of our new employee training. So we have, uh, we have new employees coming in every other week. 
Uh, literally dozens of them every other week come in to learn all about Crow Yen Clinic and how to wash your hands. And so we have that traffic coming in and out. We have a lot of uh, staff meetings at that facility. And uh, coming in conjunction with the pediatric space next to the training center up on the second floor, we also are moving all of our pediatric and adult ENT services. Um, and so that space will be accessible by, uh, by the mall, inside the mall. If you wanna go ahead. Um, just, just a quick update on where we are. So construction is projected to be completed in August of 2021. So again, in August. And we're looking at moving all of our equipment and the clinical operations part of this. It'll begin in August as well. Uh, as well as then we will move all of our existing clinics that would be staff and uh, specific equipment uh, for each of those clinics. They'll move in in a phased approach in September. And officially uh, right now we're projecting that October 4th, Monday, October 4th, we will uh, begin seeing patients there. Um, so uh, just so you know, the, this is a culmination of years and years of, of planning. Uh, we're very excited to be able to move all of our, our, our outpatient practices there. Uh, the main driver behind this is uh, really improving the patient experience for our patients and their families. And if you go to the next slide, I can give you some information about what we're uh, projecting to be visiting uh, on a daily basis. So our practices, the, the uh, specialty practices are set to be open from eight to five, Monday through Friday. But our general pediatric practice, which is moving actually from our Jefferson Street office, uh, we will have after hours and weekend hours for those patients as well. Uh, we will also offer uh, evening and weekend hours for patients who currently visit our um, up the road on 419, our practice there, as well as our, uh, our um, pediatric medicine offices in Daleville and Franklin County. So we will be having patients from those areas. They're able to access our facilities uh, after hours and on weekends at the mall. Um, but between uh, pediatric medicine, uh, pediatric specialties, the dentistry, ENT, and our Crayon Clinic HR, we anticipate between 1,000 and 1,500 patients, family members, and staff there every single day. Um, that obviously is a bit variable um, because people will be coming in and out of lab services. Uh, they'll be coming for appointments. And, uh, you know, sometimes the, the staffing for the specialty practices are, are a bit variable. But again, I mean, we're looking at an average of about it could be up to about 1,500 people every single day coming to the location, okay? Um, if you wanna move ahead. So some, some things to really think about in terms of who will be coming to visit the location. So we serve patients from far Southwest Virginia all the way up to almost to Harrisonburg, uh, down into uh, Martinsville, Danville, up into the Lynchburg area. And that's our primary and secondary service areas. And in 2019, we had nearly 75,000 outpatient visits uh, to, our, to our different locations. So nearly 50% of them have to travel at least an hour to get here. And that was one of the primary drivers for, for building and moving to this location. We want to make it as um, as convenient as possible for our patients. Many of them have and see multiple physicians in one day. And we also know that they, they tend to bring multiple family members on the same trip. If, you, if you're traveling an hour to come to a doctor's appointment or two doctor's appointment, you're bringing the siblings, you're bringing a grandma, you're bringing another family member with you. So these are, these are larger groups of people who are coming in uh, to visit the location, and they're going to be there for a while. Um, they're going, they've made the investment in time to come, uh, so they're going to be spending some time at Tanglewood Mall. And on a, on a related note to that, so we, we did some survey research uh, early on with, with staff and uh, with patients, and what came through loud and clear, they're 
definitely looking for convenience and they need to eat. Uh, they, they want to be able to, to take their kids and, and be able to do some shopping, especially if, if they're coming in from longer distances and they're coming into Roanoke. Uh, they want to be able to spend their time, uh, you know, catching up on some shopping um, and, and having a nice meal and, and having a quick meal in, in some instances. And that's particularly true for our staff. Uh, the staff actually can move, uh, get into the mall through, we have two, definitely have two doors that can be accessed by our staff to get in and out of the mall uh, directly. So, you know, we know that they want child-friendly, uh, they're looking for convenience and they will definitely be hungry for sure. So if you want to go ahead and uh, move to the next one. And then I just wanted to, to wrap up and show a couple of other images. This again, the interior, uh, this is exactly the way it's going to look. It's very bright. Uh, the construction team has done a great, a great job. We're opening up with windows and we'll have some uh, natural light inside. So it's very fam family friendly for sure. Next slide, if you don't mind. Um, and again, there we go. And, and so what's kind of cool is uh, we have this really great, they took out uh, the escalators, the JCP escalators, and we have this really great uh, stairwell that, that goes up to the second floor. We have super easy wayfinding. It'll be very easy to find uh, your office in here. So, you know, we're really looking forward to this. It's going to be an extraordinary patient experience for people. And I, and I really look at uh, the businesses and Tanglewood Mall as being such an important part of the overall patient experience. And it, it was one of the biggest drivers for the decision to move to this location. Okay. Great. Hey, thank you so much, Betsy. This is wonderful news. I mean, obviously, there's a, a lot of vehicle traffic, patients, visitors to uh, your operation that's to be expected over the next uh, year or so and, and into the future. So it's going to really create density at the mall that will drive new business interests. And perfect for children, toy stores, daycares, um, I can just imagine uh, the support services that will help you and the county and the mall in the future. So thank you so much for your investment and your participation today. I am looking in the chat box again. Um, I'll read a few while I'm here. I, from Melody, I have reached out to Trader Joe's, White House Black Market, and Bonefish Grill in reference to opening locations in Roanoke. When reaching out, should I recommend the Tanglewood location as black, well as Blackwater's information? I would say yes, John. Yeah, absolutely. There's some there's some tenants that aren't going to go in a size market of Roanoke, uh, but you just never know. So, for instance, we built the Trader Joe's in Williamsburg, Virginia, and that that's a market of seventy five thousand people. But obviously, there's a lot of visitors to Williamsburg. So, uh, if you go to other markets. Trader Joe's won't go in a market that's less than a million people. So there, there are standards, but sometimes there are, you know, things that happen that are different. So we, we reach out, but again, we have Kroger, so Trader Joe's is not allowed. So there's restrictions on use as well that also, you know, uh, keep us from doing certain uses. White House Black Market, I can't say I'm as familiar with their current expansion plan, but a lot of them have slowed it down and are not doing it anymore. Bonefish Grill will be great they they did have interest in tanglewood but it's probably been five years uh, so uh, always always welcome anybody reaching out and, and and trying to get someone interested and another question for you john is there a possibility of adding a road behind the mall and or another 220 south exit to accommodate the increase in traffic to the vicinity the widening of 419 and 220 ramps help solve the current Tanglewood area traffic problems, but may not be enough to prevent future traffic jams, bottlenecks, and accident-prone conditions. Currently, no plans for that. Uh, the rear of the mall is, you know, up against the uh, railroad tracks, and so it has a rear drive, but no plans to do a rear road. Um, I guess it, there's a big topographic change in elevation in the back where the theater is and those things it would be an extremely expensive 
uh, venture. And I think today I haven't heard of any interest maybe from the DOT from doing that. Well, we can look at it in the future perhaps, but it's, it's complicated yeah. with the railroad tracks. I understand that. Um, I noticed that Elizabeth Poindexter did uh, add to the chat feature if anyone is interested in leasing information at Tanglewood to reach out to Elizabeth. She's yep. a leasing manager. She's posted her direct uh, phone number contact in the chat box. Can you all see that, John? Yep, that's okay. correct. That's exactly who they would need to call. All right. Uh... Let's see, French Quarter, any emphasis for independent specialty stores and businesses? Uh, are you saying related to the French Quarter? Similar to that, I think, is what they're asking. I've seen the pictures in the past. Um, you know, there's there are certainly local uses, like the uniform. Uh, Terry Mathis, who was across uh, 220 there and uh, has moved over to our location. There's certainly some local uses like like his that uh, we want in this in this center but as far as a themed uh area no, no current plans for that okay thank you and and just for clarity's sake here uh john abernathy you're showing up as marshall stanley here and i apologize for that but it was because of the way the zoom link was registered under my employee's name rather than your name so yeah, no problem. Yeah, yeah. For any confusion to our participants, John Abernathy is speaking on behalf of Tanglewood on today's Zoom call. Um, what about pedestrian access between the primary mall buildings and the boundary buildings with restaurants near 419? Will the, there be protected walkways? Considerations of families and children wanting food options during their visit to Tanglewood without driving to each location. Also, persons with disabilities such as wheelchair users and vision impaired that would love to spend time at the mall and will want access uh, to those options outside of the primary mall. Related to disability, I mean, we, we do with anything new, we do meet all ADA. So any anything that we're building, you're going to be able to get from your There'll be a path, an ADA path, from your parking spot to the building. Uh, the the mall does have a, as you know, a good slope from 419 to the buildings, um, and so we kind of have to work with what's already there. But we certainly make accommodation uh, at drives, and sidewalks, and front doors. Um, related to cross traffic, it's just something we're always evaluating. We're trying. There are sidewalks there in different locations, and we're always. We're going to be adding new sidewalks, new landscaping that's not there, you know, sort of wide open parking lots. You're going to see landscaping. So that is something we're always evaluating, trying to figure out how to make it better and easier to get between there. A lot of people say they want to walk, but typically in a big center, people go to one place, get in their car and drive down to the other. It's that's the common thing, even though most people say I want to walk. Most people don't, uh, but we always try to figure out ways we can encourage them to do that. I, if I could also just jump in and, and say some of the things that we're working on uh, from from that perspective. So the entrance to the main entrance to our facility will be on the Barnes and Noble side of of the mall, that end of the JCP. And that that entrance is being completely reconfigured. We'll have extensive handicap parking there as well as valet parking. And uh, we are having an extensive guest services team there as well to help to help patients and their families. Uh, we also have um, an exit that's towards the front of 419 and that exit is very easy and accessible to the one of the main entrances uh, uh, to the mall. And we will have guest services there to help families navigate that at least into, into the main part of the mall. Yeah, and I should have said that, thank you Beth. I should have said that as far as those coming to Carillion, Carillion's way down the road of making it extremely accessible. And you heard what, what she said as far as guest services and ballet. I mean, more than even us as a retail center, they're, they're, they're way down the road as being in a better situation for anybody coming to the clinic. Thank you very much. And uh, John, a couple of things, Cheesecake Factory and Chili's will fit perfectly in this plan. Did you hear that? Um. <laughs> well, yeah. Yeah, yeah, and we, um, Cheesecake is, 
is it may not be big enough for Roanoke. Um, I mean, Roanoke may not be big enough for them, but we certainly reach out to them. Uh, Chili's has shown interest in the market, and we we uh, do talk to them pretty regularly. So maybe that's something we can make happen. That would be great. Um, Susan Larkin asked about the 419 exit. Um, I, I believe your question, Susan, is about the interchange and that is being redesigned, reconstructed uh, in 2024, it shall begin. Okay, so I'm gonna move on now to Amanda with our Small Business Development Center. Amanda Forrester leads the uh, Regional Small Business Development Center for us. And, I wanted Amanda to talk about the services she provides for small business assistance. So Amanda. Thank you. I appreciate the opportunity to be here. Um, I'm Amanda, the director of the Renwick Regional SBDC, which is small development, um, small business development center. And we work with businesses under 250 employees um, and really helping them with all aspects of their business in every phase so that they can focus on, on, on what they're doing, um, the nuts and bolts of, of what they do. And so we offer pro bono advising. It's free to you. Um, thanks to our cooperative agreement with the small business, U.S. Small Business Administration, as well as um, local localities and organizations like Roanoke County. And so we appreciate their support. We offer low cost training. Uh, and free tools, online and digital tools, to really fuel our region's small business success. Um, and so that's our role in the region. But why I'm here today is talk to you about um, how, if you're interested in any of this development and want to be part of it, we can certainly help you with that process. Um, these are some of the things that we help clients with, but I also want to talk specifically today about the Tanglewood Project. And we're in a position to help you and walk you through identifying space as a neutral party um, that actually happens to be my background, can help you determine what is right for you for space um, considerations and your business, as well as help you with business planning and market research so that if you need lending or financing in some way, whether it's private or traditional, we can assist you with the packaging for that. Um, we also help with industry research. We have access to lots of different databases that can help you understand the industry that you're wanting to enter or are in and if it's a fit for the demographics that um, Jill outlined for us earlier. Um, we also are able to make connections for you um, with whatever you might need to have happen. Um, we have lots of connections in the region and can help connect you to the right people um, for those needs. And then we also help you once you're in place, grow and expand. So we're looking forward to small businesses coming to the Tanglewood area. It's um, the, the foot traffic and the increase in that and the market that's gonna be there with Carillion, um, the addition of the pediatric services is a tremendous opportunity for so many of our current small businesses who, who are ready to expand into that and could, that could be a great market for them or also new businesses um, who really could serve that market well and benefit from really foot traffic that's not going to be anywhere else. Um, so we're excited to see this. We want to be here to help you with that process. Um, so Phil, please feel free to reach out to me. I think Jill, if you'll go to the next couple slides here at the end. Um, this is our team that works with, with businesses in our region. And then lastly, on the last slide, we have our contact information there. So you can reach us by those methods um, or I'm Amanda, feel free to reach out to me. It's A Forrester, F-O-R-R-E-S-T-E-R -R -E at RenwickSmallBusiness.org. Um, or if you call or text our phone number there, I will get that as well. And we'd be glad to talk to anyone um, about what your needs are and if it's something that we can assist with. Most, most likely it is. And we can be a, a partner of yours throughout the entire journey. So Jill, that's it. I'll turn it back over to you. I don't think I see any questions here for me, but I appreciate the opportunity to, to spend with everyone today and introduce what, what we do at the SBDC. Great. Thanks, Amanda. You're a wonderful partner and resource to run up county. You certainly helped a number of county businesses, and we appreciate you a great deal. Um, I can't believe we're four minutes away from the hour mark, and you guys did an amazing job uh, pulling this together in an hour. Thank you so much for your participation. I would add to the participants that 
if you have any questions, any needs uh, from, from Roanoke County, please feel free to reach out to me and to my office um, with the Economic Development Department of the county. Our main number is 772-2069. We're here to help you. Um, we're glad to support you in any way we can as you try to plan and grow your business. I'm looking at the chat feature again. Um, could we go back to the slide with the list of people in the SBDC? How's that? Um, all information is available in the slide deck. We will put it on our website at yesronoke.com. So you will be able to access the video and the slide deck. Um, let's see. WDBJ7, could you email me the Zoom link? Yes, we will do that, Lindsay. And I, I will open the floor for uh, additional questions. Um, hey, still... yep, sorry. Um, so I, I had a question for Amanda. Um, so thanks for speaking, Amanda, and thanks everyone that was presenting and going over the slides and everything. Um, the question I have for Amanda is I'm working with Tom uh, Tanner. Um, I just started working with an amazing guy, very, very informative in you know, helping me get to my decisions. Um, now, you mentioned that as far as funding and lending and those sort of things, you guys would be able to assist. And I guess we can probably talk offline about it. Um, but is that directly through, you know, vendors that you guys have, or is it more of a network connections that are made to support those type of items? We work with um, very closely with many of our regional and local banks. Um, we always recommend people first work with the bank they're already working with, and then we can connect you otherwise. But really our role is to help determine are you eligible for a loan and we know exactly what the banks are looking for we know you know everyone has different requirements but we know them all we're very familiar with them um, and can help you put a package together if you're eligible um, to put in front of them so that so that when you go you're ready to get the lending and don't have to work months and months with them um, to get everything in order and, and tom actually Muhammad, if you want to talk with him he is He's really our lending specialist. Um, and so he would be glad to, to talk to you about that for sure. Great, um, I guess I would be remiss if I didn't let the Board of Supervisors member, Mr. Mahoney say a few words if he wishes since the, this corridor is in his district. Uh, Mr. Mahoney, would you like to say a few words? No, this has just been a, an exciting uh, presentation. I'm very happy to, to, to see some people who are interested in uh, the development of, of this part of Roanoke County. And, and it's not just a, a county issue. I think it affects the broader Roanoke region as a whole. Uh, I'm, I'm very happy to see what Carillion is doing because if you look at where Carillion's facilities are located in the city and you come down Franklin Road to Tanglewood, I, I see a, a tremendous amount of economic development possibilities in that entire quarter. Um, I understand a lot of people are, are eager to get moving on this, and, and I want you to know that the Board of Supervisors is, is very committed to this. Um, uh, we've been working with uh, Commonwealth of Virginia and VDOT in order to try to uh, get sufficient funding for a lot of the road improvements and the intersection improvements. Uh, it takes a while to get VDOT and, and all the road projects together, but I think we have a lot of those in place. So uh, Mr. Abernathy and the folks at Carillion, uh, thank you. Uh, th this, is, this is fantastic. I think there's a lot of wonderful opportunities here and uh, I just hope that everything can come together. I see with uh, COVID and the pandemic, it looks like our economy is opening up. So, so I'm optimistic. And Jill, I want to thank you for, for putting this together. Um, I want to say hi to my friend, Don Witt. Don, I'm glad you're, you're participating. Thank you. Um, but again, I'll be quiet. Thank you very much. This is, a, this is a great opportunity and a great start. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mahoney. And uh, thanks to everyone on today's call. Uh, we really appreciate your participation. Um, let's see, one more thing. Yeah, the news outlets are asking for Zoom links, so we'll make sure we get them to them. Thank you again, everyone, for being with us today. And if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to any 
of us at any time. So with that, I hope you all have a great day.